Hey guys, and welcome to Subnautica. So Subnautica is a survival sandbox, but in a different vein than all the survival sandbox that are flooding the market right now. What Subnautica adds is something new, is an underwater experience. Not only is that, is it adds flora, fauna, and true biospheres. So there's an entire areas to explore and develop with predators, prey, and just magnificent creatures to discover. So, the game is developed by Unknown Worlds Entertainment, the same producers of Natural Selection 2. So, unlike like every other sandbox game, they give you your choice of how you want to play. You can play in creative mode, and build your own world with no limitations. If you want a little more of a challenge, but you still want to have that creative influence, you can play survival where you only have to manage your oxygen levels and your health. You can go into a true survival focus where you have to avoid dangerous creatures, find resources, manage hunger and thirst to survive. Or if you really want the true survivalist, one life to live, hardcore is your way to go. But note, there'll be no oxygen alerts, so you have to really be careful of when you are drowning. So, we're going to be playing the survival mode. So this is our ship, the Aora. So, we do not know what has damaged the Aora. All we know is it's going to crash, and we only have a limited time to escape in our escape pod. There is a whole crew of the Aora, and we can only hope they have escaped much like ourselves. So originally the game would just fade to black here and you'd wake up in your escape pod. The new update has actually has us physically escaping, which is really cool. It shows that they're always working on improving and developing the game. So, it also makes a lot of sense and kind of gives an idea of what happened in the early stages. So there's our ship, the Aora. There's the first explosion that probably took the ship down. And shows you why our ship starts in a damaged state. As when we wake up here, um, <laughs> we will be already thrown into an emergency situation. <laughs> open, open up, open up! <laughs> so the game, I like this, kind of gives you a tutorial, allows you to kind of do. Pick up the fire extinguisher and extinguish the fire. Pretty basic. So. Definitely useful. So, this is our PDA. The PDA kind of gives you all the information and helps you manage your game. To assist you in further survival in emergency situations, you have been issued this personal data assistant. The interface visible now will organize your inventory, display currently available construction blueprints, and holds other valuable information. Please take a moment to familiarize yourself with it. So guys, we're not going to get too much into these blueprints. Um, a lot of them has to do with base building and um, stuff we have not unlocked yet. So the voice log just tells you stuff that the um, game has told you, which is kind of neat. So photo album is where you store your screenshots and the data bank gives you information about stuff you collect and basic information. This gives you basic information, but pretty much it lets us know that we were, our main goal was a mining operation. There was um, a big team of people with us. Attention. And this kind of gives you a hint about a lot of the stuff that may be in a ship. So if you can get back to the ship, you could collect them. The Aurora's dark matter drive core due to damage sustained during collision. Continuing to monitor. So this tells you just that there's, the ship is leaking radiation more or less. This gives us some information about our emergency pod and tells us what is included. So there's actually a, some 
Um, handheld spectra scanner, ready rations, three liters of water provisions, emergency med kit, flashlight, emergency flare, and so assorted replacement parts. All here. And equipment just tells you about the suit. So. I would not, do not really want to bore you, but something that new players don't really realize right away is there is a storage container built into the ship that we can use. So I like to save this stuff in case you really need some stuff later on, especially this nutrient. You don't get food that dense for a while. So you might think your food and water is quite low. It's honestly not too bad right now. So one thing you do want to do is you want to grab the med kit out of the fabricator because it will make more. I would just recommend just putting it back in, but so when you dive in, there's a couple things you want to look for right away. Um, I like to grab myself some AirPods just in case because I don't like to use all my salt in the production of water. Play the game your way. So, um, so there's a variety of creatures. Some creatures provide more food than others. Some can be picked up. See, this creature cannot be picked up by hand. However, smaller creatures like this peeper can be picked up by hand. Um, peepers are very fast, so they're harder to catch. They will be easier to Emergency. catch later on. But Ten seconds of oxygen remaining. Usually there's not too many predators in this area. He is actually a predator, so you want to be careful of him. He will try to eat you. But like I was saying, um, there's a variety of different fish you can collect. Generally, whatever you can eat is the best. However, peepers generally give the most food. Even though this boomerang here might look like it'd be a good source of food, it is not really. However, like I said, anything you can eat is not a bad source of food. Um, these air things, air sacs, they actually give you um, water rather than food. You can eat them, but it is not generally recommended. So, there is two types of food. Cured food, which we do not have the ability to do yet, does not decay where normal food here does. So why don't we look at the different types of food here quickly. We'll make a couple different things. Again, do not cook air sacs. Your, sh your ship has power. It is solar powered if you read the description. So power will regain over time. So, so you do not have to grab food, but I do recommend it. So if you look at the difference between these things, the peeper, way more food, way more H2O. But, so, you could eat um, food to get H2O, but you don't always need to. So the first thing you want to do is look around a little bit and see if you can find metal lying on the ground, as well as this um, quartz. So, limestone, if you see it, definitely pick it up, but quartz and Metal salvage is what you're looking for. Caution. Um, Continue to maybe collect four. Ooh. May cause a quantum detonation. He really spun towards me. Assessment. By malnourishment. By so what we did is that guy um, released. By exposure to radioactive crash materials. When you get near him, they will release a little bit of a cloud. We swam through the cloud and it damaged us. Death increases to 65%. Emergency. 10 seconds of oxygen remaining. So what happens there is it was talking about the drive core. It's degrading and it's about to explode. So we didn't get our oxygen warning. However, I did. <laughs> we did manage to survive. So we're actually finding lots of quartz, but not as much metal. Not as important to find metal, but you probably want to find at least two or three of um, the metal pieces. There's... Okay, there's another piece. So... If we find one more metal piece, we'll be in really good shape, and we can continue on. So, um, limestone gives you pretty much a variety of your other ores. So there's copper. You can get copper, titanium, um, and quite a few other ores. So this is a cave. Caves have more ores than other um, areas. So there's some titanium and there's some else got. Perfect. So that is actually the kelp forest. That's where we're going to want to go immediately following. However, there's two things 
we want to quick the craft before we go in there. So once you have collected your metal scraps and your quartz, you can head back to the pod. Note the pod can be entered from the top and from the bottom. I use the end from the bottom because it's easier. So if we hit up our fabricator, um, there, you need to refine these resources first. So if you look at our inventory, this metal salvage is taking up a lot of space. So we can actually make it take up, well it doesn't technically take up less space, but we can make it um, into titanium, which is the resource you need, and it kind of breaks it up a little bit. So you will also want to turn the cores you turn into, into glass. We're going to need this titanium and glass for something very important in just seconds. I recommend turning all your quartz into glass because you're going to need quite a bit of glass in the early game. So once you have done that, go into equipment and do not craft pipe. You do not need pipe right now, but rather O2. So once you craft your O2 tanks, you can craft two or three. I usually craft three um, just to have one in here. You don't need three right now, but it's a nice thing to have for later on. So generally you don't have to carry too much food or water with you unless you're going on a long trip. So we have our two packs and a little bit of filter water just in case we really need it. We'd actually drink it on the way. So it is as again to nighttime. Nighttime is more dangerous. However, I'm not too worried. We're not going somewhere too dangerous. Just know nighttime is more dangerous. However, some things are less active during the night as well. So, oopsie. Okay. Warning. Local radiation readings exhibit characteristics consistent Never mind. I lied. The of the Aurora's dark matter drive core. A quantum detonation will occur so. with a probability of 85.5%. Advise observing a one kilometer safety range. So, we actually, like I saw it when we spawned, you usually don't spawn near a lot of these creatures. We just happen to, for some reason, spawn near a whole bunch of them. For some reason, so. We're actually not going to be able to do this until morning, sadly. Because these things are just going to keep harassing us and trying to gobble us down. But yeah, usually I don't spawn near a whole bunch. I, I play this game three or four times just to kind of get the idea of it. And I've never had them spawn right there. So, since we're gonna eat, I recommend just using a med kit. Um, so, I guess you can just look around for quartz if this happens to you as well. So, let's, so look around for quartz, titanium, and start collecting the variety of things you're gonna need. Um, mostly looking for limestone deposits is one of the big things. One other thing I guess I could show you since we have a second is digging. You can dig in this game. Um, for the most part in the early areas, shallow shores or sh shady shallows, can't remember exactly is. There's nothing really to find, but you can dig yourself a hole. Um, I don't really know what purpose these holes have, but if you want, you can dig yourself a hole, and it will stay here, and you can, I don't know, just be in it. So, I guess I get, it could you could dig an area to put your um, base in. It would take a very long time, but you could do it if you're interested. So, um, I guess there's some merit to going to the coral forest right away, and maybe that's why I haven't run into too much trouble. Usually I go to the coral forests right away rather than kind of spending some of the time like I did there but no matter um, we can actually collect some peepers and other stuff while we're waiting explored area um, salt is an important thing to find this is salt so. seismic readings suggest a quantum detonation has occurred in the Aurora's drive core the central dark matter reactor will reach a supercritical state in T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. So the reactor has gone super critical. Meaning the aura has exploded. 
This has released radiation into the water and means that it is not safe to go near the aura at this time. We can't get a radiation suit later and there is good stuff you can get in Aurora, but there's other stuff you must do first. So, but I'm really bummed that we can't go straight to the kelp floors. I've literally never had trouble with it, but, and Shady Sh Shallows is supposed to be the safest place in the game. Like you're most po not supposed to have any trouble with hostile sea creatures. You see that creature took another swipe at me. So. I've never seen this in all the times i played this. It's funny that the time I go to record it, um, we get it, so. You also do want to be careful. Those guys, they are dangerous, as you saw. So. Also, I'm getting tons of quartz, but not as much limestone deposits. One thing I guess I can show you here is this is... Um, purple brain coral it releases oxygen so if you are quite deep you can use these to recover your oxygen so salt will play an important role in something we will show shortly once it becomes pretty much certain creatures like those um, I'm not sure if they're called hunters or what they're called but um, they're very aggressive at night less aggressive during the day so one thing we'll be getting will, will allow us to easier catch peepers, so. I think it's becoming daytime here, so. I guess there's one other thing I can show you before we totally go back. There's something I think that's really cool, and that's the store, the means of storage in this game, so pick up a couple more things but and head back to the pod also during the nighttime gary fish are extremely docile so they're very easy to catch if you want easy food so I may as well grab this is for some blue but don't focus on this too much we're Swimming will become much quicker very shortly. So. Anyway. If we just turn this into titanium. We can actually craft something that's really cool. A waterproof locker. So waterproof lockers are really neat. Oh well. And if you get the message that you are you need to free up some space. Um, just... I'll um, drop some stuff off. Um, that's just so we already have that full. And this is where the larder proof lockers come in very handy. They are additional storage for yourself. But what's expensive cool about them is they'll stay where they're placed. If you push them, they will move. Otherwise, they'll stay. If you push them down, they will move down. Whatever you do with them, they will follow that rule, which is really neat. So. So we actually have this pretty much full, um, but that's fine. So we want to now, finally, hopefully these guys will let me enter the core forest without trying to attack and kill me. So they should be less hostile now that is daytime. They're very protective of metal is kind of their thing, but see, it looks like we're being able to sidestep them. So what you're looking for is you're looking for these kind of coral polyps. No, oh, maybe he's trying to guard it, so let's kind of let him... No. Is he coming towards us? Not sure. See, they're a lot more docile during the day than they are during the nighttime. Probably could grab one more, but that is enough. That's really all you need to craft all the stuff we're going to craft. See, like, we're getting quite close to him and he's being pretty, pretty nice to us, so. And really, I probably don't even need to collect all this quartz, but it, it is useful to have and you can just store it. So you get lots of storage. So you can see all this titanium we're getting early on. There's lots of titanium. You will use lots of titanium, but you will also get lots of titanium. 
So yeah, that's full. <laughs> so. Or the pod, we can actually craft some of the very important things now. So if we go to the fabricator, go to base materials, do not craft lubricant, craft the silicone rubber. So silicone rubber is pretty much your most important early game ingredient. So just turn all your um, polyps into rubber. So now that we have that, there's two main things we want to equip. The first one is the fins. Fins will allow you to swim faster. The second one we will want is the survival knife. Survival knife has important functions, mostly in that you can protect it, but you can also collect new materials. So the fins will equip automatically, but you'll notice a lot faster swim speed. But if you go to the knife, you can collect things that you weren't able to collect before. So writhing weed seeds, not really that useful at this point, but the big thing you're actually looking for, just note you can collect all kinds of things, like you can cut off this purple table coral, all kinds of things. But what you're actually looking for is common coral. Not purple coral, red coral, or whatever type of coral you'll find. You want common coral. So just go up to one of these co coral tubes and start slicing into it. So you don't need too much, but you can get a little bit extra. And now that you're faster, feel free to grab air sacs, peepers. See, like, look how much easier it is to catch up the peepers. Now that you can kind of swim as fast as them. Oop. So. So what we'll craft in here is we need salt and the coral. What you can even do is you could just make a pod and fill it up with the coral. I don't actually like doing it this way, but it is an easy way of doing things. So once you have your coral, oops, we don't actually, we have to grab our salt. Oh, all my salt's in the other container actually, but that's fine. Like I said, I don't like doing it this way. I prefer just catching the air sacs, but you make bleach. What you can do is you can use the bleach now in here to craft disinfected water. So disinfected water has a different look. Because if you look at our... Oh, we don't have any regular water. But if you look at disinfected water compared to filtered water, it gives you more water back. So it is more useful when you need to get a lot of... when you need to carry water because it takes up the same amount of water as the regular water. So it is good. So I do recommend it, but if you just need some water to drink, I recommend just catching a couple of the other things. Because salt you will use in keeping your food. So if we're looking at it quickly here, if we cook food, it's not going to stay good forever. So. Where, I'm actually have to go get some salt from outside. Quickly. But what we can do now is instead of cooking the fish, we can cure the fish. Cured fish gives a very tiny amount of um, less H2O or rather a very tiny amount of decreased H2O. So if you're going to eat stuff right away, it is still better. See, this one gives 31.4, this one gives 32, negative 2. So it never goes down. So. so if you just need to eat something, definitely go cooked. Cured is good if you leave in your home. Because if you're leaving at home, you cannot cook food. And uncooked food is really kind of painful to have. Oops, we don't want that. So you guys, I think that's pretty much everything you need to know about the basics. The, now that you know the stuff, you can kind of go and explore your own way. Um, explore, repair your pod, and kind of find a way off the island possibly. Or maybe create a new life here. So, it's a whole world to explore, and I welcome you to it. Thanks guys.
Later.